Hi everyone, I'll be installing Pop OS on a separate drive in a dual boot setup with Windows without using a USB drive. Installing Pop OS on a separate drive is great if you want to keep things separate. You can use the entire drive or you can just use some free space on it. So I'm going to open up Disk Management. So for me, I have my first disk here, 476 gigabytes, and my second disk here, 223 gigabytes. And my second disk, I have my D drive here, it's my data drive. And I go into Explorer, and I'm going to use some of the free space on it to install Pop OS. I'm going to go and download it, go to pop.system76.com, and then go to download. And there are three options here. LTS. The second option is if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. And the third option here is if you have a Raspberry Pi. And at the bottom here, it says the system requirements, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, 64-bit processor, USB 3 storage for Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to download the LTS. Once it is downloaded, click on the file, hit enter or right click and mount. This will mount the image. Open. All right, so it's been mounted, and now I'm going to go into disk management. We see the image here has been mounted on the G drive, and now I am going to create a new partition for the ISO image, and I'm going to be putting it on my first disk. So I'm going to use some free space from my C drive. I have 353 gigabytes available, so more than enough space. So I'm going to shrink it. I'm going to shrink it by 2600 megabytes. Shrink. All right, it's done. I'm going to create a new simple volume. Next, 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 FAT32, and I'll call it POP OS. Next, finish. All right, it's been created, and I'm going to go back to Explorer. I'm going to go to my G drive. I'm going to copy everything, go to my F drive, and paste. All right, it's completed, and I'm going to go back into disk management. And the partition is seen as a basic data partition. Now your BIOS should be able to detect this partition and boot from it. But if it's not able to, it may be because it needs to be seen as an EFI system partition. So to change that, I'm going to open up disk part. Run as administrator. Yes. Type in list disk. And I'm going to select my first disk, disk 0. List the partitions. I'm going to be selecting partition number 5, the 2600 megabyte partition. Type in help set ID, and type in set ID equals, and I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to look for the EFI system partition value in hex. Copy, and then paste. Enter. All right, so it's been changed, and we can also see here in disk management that it's been changed as well. So now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In my BIOS, ensure that Secure Boot is disabled. And if you have Fast Boot, disable it as well. And in my BIOS here, I'm going to do a one-time boot into the Pop OS partition. And the Pop OS partition, it's seen as UFI OS. And I can confirm that by going back into Windows, open up a command prompt as admin, type in bcd edit forward slash enum space firmware. And can see at the bottom there, seen as partition F, which is the F drive, which was created, and then the description UFI OS. So I'm going to boot into it. All right, it comes up and I'm going to pick the option, try or install Pop OS. All right, it started up Pop OS to the live environment here. Now I have a wired connection, so it's connected to the internet. But if you have a Wi-Fi connection, you can set it up. Going to the top. Going to Wi-Fi not connected, select network. And you can select the network that you're in and connect. And if you have a hidden network, you can go to Wi-Fi not connected, and you can go to Wi-Fi settings, and then you can hit the three dots and connect to hidden network. Put in your network name, the Wi-Fi security type, and then password, and then hit connect. Once you're connected, you should see it say connected on the right-hand side. And so since I have a wired connection, I'm just going to disable my Wi-Fi and I'm going to use my wired connection. And so I'm at the installer screen here and it's asking me for my language, English, and then hit select, US, select, keyboard layout, English, US, select. 
default select. And what I'm going to do is do a custom advanced. And so it's found my separate drive here. And I'm going to go to modify partitions. And here's my partition. I'm going to resize it. And I'm going to shrink it by 60,000. And then align to megabytes. And then resize. And then I'm going to hit the check mark here just to apply to confirm that it's going to resize OK for doing the next steps. Apply. Close. OK, so it's resized it, so that's good. And I'm going to right click, New. It's going to be a new partition. This is going to be for the EFI partition for Pop OS. So it's going to be one gigabyte. And I'll label it as Pop EFI. File system will be FAT32. Hit Add. Go back to the unallocated space. Right click, New. And this will be for swap. I have 12 gigs here, so I'm going to do 12 gigs for swap. File system, Linux swap, and I'll call this pop swap. Add, and the last partition will be for slash. Right click, new, and then ext4, and then hit add. All right, so I got the three partitions here, and then hit the check mark to apply. Apply, and then I can see the details. So when as expected, close it, close. And now I'm going to set the flags on the EFI partition. Make sure boot is selected. Close. Close gparted. All right, and we see the new partitions come up. So that's good. So go to the yellow one, which is my new EFI partition. Select it. Format it. And go to my swap partition. Use partition. Use a swap. Yes. And I'm finally going to my slash partition. Use partition. So it'll be for root slash and then format and then erase and install. And here it's asking you for your full name and username. Next. And it's asking for your account password. Next. And it's going to install and it's going to take a little bit of time. And you can click on the little terminal to see the progress. And you can click it again to go out. All right, it's completed. And before I restart, I'm going to run EFI Boot Manager just to see the boot order. Open up a terminal, type in EFI boot manager, and we see here in the boot order 0004 is first, so it should boot pop OS first. But what I'm going to do is restart my computer and go into the BIOS just to confirm. All right, in my boot order here, I have the Windows boot manager, and then there's the UFI OS, and then third is pop OS. Even though earlier in the EFI boot manager output, it said that it would boot it first. I see here it's number three. Four is UFI OS on my NVMe drive, which would also boot into Pop OS, and you may or may not have it. So now I'm going to change boot option number one, so it goes into Pop OS. All right, so now it's boot option number one, and now I'm going to save changes and exit. All right, it's booted directly into Pop OS. And there is no option to select between Pop! OS and Windows. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to log in. All right, so now I'm in. And I have the welcome screen here. Next, 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 next. Skip Wi-Fi. Privacy, next. Put in my time zone. Next, skip. And start using Pop! OS. So as mentioned, there is no menu to select between Pop! OS and Windows. And Pop OS uses the System D boot boot manager. Now, the System D boot boot manager can't launch EFI binaries from partitions other than where it's launched. So, to give some context, I'm going to open up a terminal. sudo su dash, put in my password, and I'm going to type in fdisk dash l to list all my disks and partitions. And so, I'm going to scroll up, and we see here at the top, this is my NVMe drive. And this is where I have installed Pop! OS. Here are the three partitions. And this is the EFI partition. That is where System D boot, boot Manager information is located. And so it can't launch EFI binaries from partitions other than where it's launched. In other words, from here. So in my case, Windows, it's not only located on a different partition, but it's also as well as located on a completely different drive, DevSDA. So it can't launch it directly. 
but you can use the UFI shell to do so. So I'm going to use the EDK2 shell, which is available on GitHub. And you can build it from source or you can just download the binary. And to save time, I'm going to download the binary. So I'm going to open up Firefox. I'm going to go to GitHub, pbitard, UFI shell. And so as we can see here about, this is the UFI shell binary images generated from the EDK2 stable. And if you scroll down here, these images are mostly provided in the form of a bootable ISO in order to make them easy to use with boot media creators such as Rufus. And if you scroll down here, you can validate the binary. So I'm going to go and download it, scrolling up, go to downloads, and then this is the latest version. And it's going to be the shell x64 EFI because running in x64 architecture. So I'm going to download it, going back into the terminal. So I'm going to go into the boot directory, ls. I'm going to go into the EFI directory, ls, and then into the EFI folder, ls. And so this is where I'm going to put the EFI binary, the one I just downloaded. So I'm going to copy it on my downloads folder, and I'm going to call it EFI shell x64.efi ls. We see it's there. And now I'm going to create a systemd boot boot entry for the EFI shell. Go out to the parent, ls. Going to the loader directory, ls, and going into the entries directory, ls-al, and there's the pop OS loader entry. And now I'm going to make one for the EFI shell. And so I'm going to use nano to create the file, call it EFI shell x64.conf, and then put in the title EFI shell x64, the EFI file, EFI directory, and then it'll be EFI shell x64.efi. And then control X to exit. Yes. File name to write. Enter. And then do a list. We see it's there. And I'm going to go into the parent directory, ls-al. There's the loader.com file. I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to add in a new entry for timeout 5. So I'll give it a timeout of 5 seconds. Control X to exit. Save. Yes. And then enter. ls-al. It's been modified. And I'm going to type in boot ctl list so I can see the entries. And then we see first is pop OS and then second UFI shell x64. So it's there. So that's good. Now, before rebooting, I'll need the part UUID in order to help locate the identifier for the Windows EFI partition. So I'm going to type in block ID and this will list the partitions and the part UUID. And as seen earlier, dev sda1 is my Windows EFI system partition, and so I'll need the part UUID. And so we see here it ends with C40B. And now I'm going to reboot my computer. All right, boot manager loads up, and I got three entries pop OS, and then the UFI shell, and then reboot into firmware interface. So I'm going to go into the UFI shell. All right, the UFI shell comes up, and this may look intimidating, but we won't be here long. So I'll be looking for the file system, fs, that has the part UUID. And in this case, it's fs2, seen at the top. And then the alias hd1a65535a1, that is what I need. So now that I have the alias, I am going to go back into pop OS. So I can just do a reset and hit enter. Go into pop OS. All right, so I'm logged back in and I'm going to open up a terminal sudo in password I'm going to create a new loader entry for windows plus slash al all right so there are my existing ones and i'm going to create a new one and i'll call it windows10.conf for the title for it will be windows10 efi efi binary again and the difference is i'm going to put in some options and no interrupt means not to be interrupted. And no map, no version is to hide the shell greeting. And next, I'm going to put in the alias that saw earlier. And then I'm going to put in the location of the Windows EFI binary. Control X to exit. Yes. File name to write. Enter. And then ls-al. And we see that it's there. I'm going to type in boot ctl list. And we see my entry, Windows 10. So that's good. And now I'm going to reboot. 
Okay, it's booted up and we see Windows 10 here at the bottom. So I'm gonna boot into it. It's booted into Windows. I'm gonna log in. I'm gonna open up Disk Management and the Pop OS installation media partition. I no longer need it. So if I right click and delete volume is grayed out. So I'm gonna delete this using disk part, start, disk part, run as administrator, list my disk, select disk zero, list my partitions, and it's the 2600 megabyte partition, select partition four, and delete partition override. And we can see it's been deleted. And now I'm gonna extend my C drive, finish. And that's it. That's how you can install Pop! OS on a separate drive in a dual boot setup without using a USB drive. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.